Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. If you've been listening and enjoying the podcast, we'd ask that you please leave a rating and a review as it helps the podcast reach outside of our pocket of faithful listeners because we want to bless the most people possible. Thanks. Welcome to the Feminine Podcast. I'm Nancy Wilson, and thank you for joining me today. I'd like to keep talking about the subject of trouble since last week, since we definitely do live right now in troubled times. I don't know. There, it's never been a trouble-free life, but sometimes they're more troubled than others, and I think that certainly 2020 has been a time of troubles. It's so important to remember that God is still in heaven, and he's not just looking down watching what's going on, but he is the author of all history. He puts kings on their thrones and he deposes them. Romans 1, 20 to 22 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And then down in verse 24, it says, Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts. So as we walk through troubled times, let's not forget that the author of all history is sovereign over every movement of evil men. He has made his power and authority visible to the eye in all of creation, and men choose not to fear him. They choose not to glorify him, and eventually he gives them up to uncleanness, and they become futile in their thoughts and fools. And so theirs is a terrible, terrible position to be in. Moving on later to chapter 5 of Romans, there's this wonderful section, and my Bible has little headings over sections. And this section, the heading says, Faith Triumphs in Trouble. (laughs) And so that's what I want to talk about today is how faith triumphs in trouble. Let's look at verses 3 through 5. I'm going to read you these verses. And I just, by the way, this is just one of my go-to places that is such an encouragement. And so I just hope you can grab hold of this and return to it and find great encouragement in it. All right, starting with verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. Now, last week I talked about rejoicing in persecution. This now, we're talking about glorying. We're to glory in tribulations. It's very similar. What does it mean to glory in tribulations? Well, it means we get excited about them. We leap for joy. And that is a far cry from curling up in the fetal position. This is not our natural or fleshly impulse when tribulations come, right? Big surprise. We're more inclined to respond in cowardly fear or worry, correct? But Paul does not leave us hanging there as though to say good luck with that. He goes on to explain what happens to us when we choose to glory in our troubles. All right. The first step is to recognize that's what God calls us to do. When persecution, when tribulation comes, we're to glory in it. We're to leap for joy. We are to rejoice because tribulation produces something good in us. It produces perseverance. And not only that, perseverance produces character and character produces hope. So we have this lovely um, string of promises. And hope doesn't disappoint us because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So it's a it's a gain, gain, gain all the way. If we choose to rejoice in our tribulations and glory in them, all these good things come downstream 
Do you see this? How are we ever to gain perseverance? Well, it's by enduring with joy, by exercising patience in a trial for a long time if necessary. I mean, what does patience even mean except to wait on the Lord for a long time, patiently? And so trials are great opportunities for us to learn to persevere. And what is perseverance and patience going to get us? It's going to get us character. And this is wonderful. Do you want to be a person with depth of character? Well, if so, you're going to have to endure some hard times. Because hard times, stewarding hard times well, is what builds us into better people. Whereas giving way to fear and worry just causes our character, I think, to sort of shrink and shrivel. So think about what trials you are bearing with right now. Each of us has something. And ask God to use the trial to build character in you. I mean, what a good prayer. So often we're praying for deliverance from our trials, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But we're to persevere in them and we're to glory in them first. You know, I think that instead of rushing to the prayer for deliverance, We need to start with the prayer that God will use this to build character and perseverance in us. This will cause our faith to grow and that those trials will bear good fruit in our lives. And so, and we know from this little passage in Romans that the fruit will be patience, character, and hope. And that wonderful hope is not going to be disappointed. Our hopes are not dashed hopes. Our hopes do not disappoint. Now, here's a suggestion for you. As I said earlier, you know, think about what tribulations, what trials, what persecutions you have, what troubles, what are those in your life story right now? Name those. Maybe make a list of them. Now, go through them one at a time and glory in them. Exult in them. Do a little dance. Do you know how your enemies hate it? When you rejoice in your troubles, <laughs> do you know how it completely undermines their plans and bursts their bubble and leaves them scratching their heads? You know, their goal, the goal of your adversaries is to make you miserable. But if we are celebrating instead, they are left with nothing. And so last week I talked about how I used to up the game at Sabbath dinner. And oh, there was another time. Uh, My husband was catching it for something on the internet, and I went and bought him a really nice bottle of scotch. Now, you may not be, maybe your husband doesn't (laughs) enjoy things like that, but I am saying get creative and make your home more fun, more joyful in the midst of trials, all right? Even Even the little ones. You know, I remember when I was a little kid, I remember getting the chicken pox. I remember getting the measles. You know, I had those childhood diseases. But I just remember my mother making it such a sweet time for me. And that's what we have to do. As we have troubles, we want to make them sweet times. Oh, I remember when I was really little, she taught me how to braid. She made this, she got some yarn and taught me how to braid. And I sat there in bed braiding braiding and braiding and braiding. She would bring me a pretty little tray with food if I was able to eat or whatever. But she just, she sewed me doll clothes or, you know, she just made it a sweet time for me so that I actually, when I look back on the chicken pox, I don't remember any suffering. I remember the sweet time and I remember my mother. And so I just think she just had a skill of how to, how to turn hard things into sweet things. And so that's what you have to do. Pray through your list of trials. Maybe you have been praying for a long time for something the Lord has not given to you yet. Have you stopped and rejoiced in that thing? Have you exulted in it? Have you done a victory dance that God is, is building character in you, that God is writing your story, that he is teaching you to be patient and to endure? and giving you depth of character. 
And that totally changes our perspective on trials. And like I said earlier, it diffuses all the power the enemy has over us to get us to be discouraged, to get us to be sad, to all, all the rest of it. So here's your charge for the day is to grab hold of all those trials, rejoice in them, and thank God for what he's doing in your life, and then stand back and watch the good things that he is going to do. Bless you all. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you'll join me next time.